Roads are clear for your morning commute, but race cars will take over downtown Nashville okay. later today for the start of the Music City Grand Prix. And our traffic anchor Rebecca Schleicher is in Sky 5 overlooking the track for us this morning. So good morning, Rebecca. Tell us more. Hey, good morning, Amy Venn. Well, as race weekend races into town for a second year, organizers say things are going to be bigger and better, and we are flying over it all. Here's the bridge right now, the iconic bridge spanning 550 yards that drivers will be driving over. The track does have a few changes this year, and staff have scheduled even more fun for fans. Here's what's in store today. Gates open at 9. About an hour later, practice and test sessions begin for the Trans Am, GT America, Indy Lights, and IndyCar Series. Stadium Super Trucks qualifying are after that. And just after 5, a special military demonstration followed by the Freedom Friday Tribute Concert with performances by former stained frontman Aaron Lewis, singer-songwriter Dina Carter, and more. Now, last year's race was really one for the books. The driver who qualified 18th ended up taking home the trophy after crashing early on in the race. It was wild and unpredictable with 80 laps, two red flags, and nine caution periods. I got a behind the scenes look with the man who designs the track. He showed me the changes he hopes will help smooth out the ride this year. This is awesome. This is great. Start your engine. Last year, IndyCar raced into Nashville, bringing a different kind of sound to Music City. The race location. All the teams just stay downtown and they can walk to the track. That is just too cool. There's not many races where that happens. A huge draw, says track designer Tony Cotman. When mapping out the race, he looks for two major things. The most difficult thing is to find in street circuits is to find the long enough straightaway. Uh, which helps passing and enough area to have for the pit stops. That's why he zeroed in on the Korean Vets Bridge and Nissan Stadium. <laughs> Crews working overnight for three weeks, racing to build the course. The footprint the same this year, but... Erickson, oh, Penske cars, how are each other on the wall? Pile-ups, especially around that final turn 11. <laughs> led to cautions during nearly half the inaugural race. All these drivers that are coming to the green flag wanting to pass each other. And piling up right here. And this is the corner where they all piled up. So the restart line is moving to the start line where there's much more space. It will be, be just like the start all over again. Every time there's a crash, it'll be a new start, a new start, a new start. Paving touch-ups on and off the bridge will smooth out the ride and a few barriers are moving back to help sight lines. Overall, he says street circuits are always less predictable. That's what's cool about IndyCar racing. You're always there, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. With fans <laughs> hanging on for the run. <laughs> We're all that fan, right? Well, here's a look at the map so you can see the entire track. It's a little over two miles long with 11 turns. It spans the Korean Vets Bridge before a series of tight turns downtown in the Sobro area. Drivers then head back over the bridge before circling the area just east of Nissan Stadium. If you're coming down to the races this weekend, Cotman tells me he thinks the best seat in the house, the best view is going to be right here. Sky 5 showing you the intersection of 2nd Street and Shelby Avenue. You can catch the action on the straightaway as drivers hit more than 175 miles an hour with a view of downtown in the background.